Hi, my name is Tracy Tagahama Espinosa, and I'd like to share a recent study that I did that tells us a bit more about what information from neuroscience can actually be moved into the classroom and applied by regular teachers. I conducted a several month long study, a Delphi panel, in which I identified several experts around the world who agreed to look at different concepts in educational neuroscience and cognitive psychology and to gauge what type of concepts could really be supported from a neuroscientific perspective and applied in classrooms which would enhance student learning outcomes. We asked six questions and what we're going to focus on today just has to do with the first one which had to do with accepted principles. Are there rules that govern practice? Are there things that are true for all brains? This was really important to identify because there's been a long-standing dispute about whether or not there's good information that can come out of the lab and actually be applied in the classroom. And this is important because once we could identify if there were truths, good information from neuroscience that could be applied in the classroom, then we could create a new model. And what was agreed upon by the Delphi panel is that, you know, step number one is that we have to get rid of the false beliefs about the brain. Number one, get rid of the junk. The right brain, left brain dichotomy, the learning styles idea, the the boys and girls brains or the 10% use of the brain. We have to get rid of those misconceptions, the misinformation about the brain in order to apply what few principles might exist, the things that are, are true for all human brains. Additionally, if we could do that, then there are other things that are also good information, true about human brains, but they have a really high degree of, of human variance and therefore uh, are less difficult to prove. For example, we all know that motivation influences learning outcomes, but what motivates you doesn't necessarily motivate me, right? So those things fall into tenets. Those aren't actually principles. They're important, but but they're less firm than the principles, the few things that we know are true for all human brains from the time you're born until you die. So this means that the new first steps are first, get rid of those neuromyths, think about the principles and tenets, take into consideration our cultural context, and then we can develop those guidelines, what we should actually do in practice. Right now, we're going to just focus on the core principles that the Delphi panel identified. After reviewing nearly 100 different concepts, only six things were actually true about all brains from the moment they're born all the way until they die.